Hi and welcome to this video. In this video I'm gonna share my tips on how to how to be inspired and how to get inspired. But at the same time you can be watching this time lapse of me making a copy of a painting so you can do two things at the same time and this painting is actually my first copy. You know that the old masters have been copying paintings of other old masters when they were learning. And so I thought that would be a good idea. Maybe I should try that. And I have finally tried that. I, I chose a smaller canvas. It wasn't big, but I think it's a good start. I didn't want to break my bones right away, so to speak. So I chose a small canvas. And the painting is um, Evening in Egedal by Gerhard Munte. I hope I'm saying that right, but if not, please Please excuse me. Monte was a Norwegian painter and he painted this painting in 1888 and obviously it was painted in Norway. So shall we get to the part with the inspiration? And so this is a process that I have discovered on my own through a few years of creating paintings and creating other things. When I was a kid, I was looking at painting and creating paintings as sort of a thing that just comes to you from one instance, just like a lightning strike. But I didn't see anything else. I didn't see what it was linked to, what it was connected to, and what did it kind of grew from, or like what did it brew from? What, what did, it, where did it come from? I didn't get it. But now I do. So today I'm gonna share with you a process of how inspiration works, I think. In my opinion, how I think inspiration works. And you can surely juice something out of this. And surely get something out of it. S but first of all, I want to say that there are things that can definitely block inspiration from appearing to you at all and then this whole process that I'm gonna share with you would not be helpful to you and just know that if you are feeling very low or depressed or self-doubtful this can just really block your inspiration and it's like a, it's like a huge rock in your way and if you have that block that might be actually the thing that is blocking your inspiration and you might want to deal with that first before you want to start anything else anyways that was just the case for me and I think that it's important to not feel guilty about that, to not feel bad about yourself because you are feeling very low or you might be a bit depressed. Don't make it mean anything about yourself, that's the baseline. That would be, I think, that's the most important thing about it all. Don't make your depression or low moods make mean anything about your about your creative abilities that's the most important thing 
maybe you have started doubting your creative abilities a long time ago, but if you are the person that has a high appreciation for art or music or something like that, something that it, you are interested in, then it's very unlikely that you would not be supposed to do it or you would have no talent at it. It's usually just some missing piece of a puzzle that you need to know or just try something, some different approach, you know, some different thoughts, different things to try. The one thing that I think will mostly de help you defeat your self-doubt and maybe depressed feelings caused by that is actually knowing that if you are super super interested in something and you just have an eye for it and you you can't you cannot you cannot s take your eyes off of it and or you, you you just cannot take your attention off of it you are just so interested in it then that's a clear sign that you have a talent at it that you actually are the maker of it whatever it is it's just you are supposed to be making it because we are cut out for it and it has been proven to me in many ways like in my art I have been doubting myself so much and I still am sometimes actually mm. yes in different areas I am but I stopped so much doubting that I am supposed to be making art when I saw this. When you're really interested in something, you just have an eye for it. That means only one thing. That you should do it. That's it. If you are interested in something so much that your mind will not come off of it. That you, can, you cannot find anything else to place your mind to, or to place your mind on. There's no other option. You're meant to do it. There's no such thing as you're not cut out for it, or you're not meant to do it, or you're not talented enough. That thing that just occupies your mind all the time, it is for you. It is entirely for you. The most important thing to know about inspiration is that it is something that touches you on a deep level. It is something that touches you and you personally. It has no regard to who else it touches, like who else likes it. It's just what touches you, you as the artist. That's the most crucial piece of information about inspiration. I get kind of frustrated when, when people start taking inspiration as something that other people like and they, they draw it or they make um, paintings of it or music or whatever just because that's something that other people they they see it as inspiring or worthy but that is not inspiration inspiration is directly about your feelings and what directly you can feel on your own skin and what you can directly what directly pierces you and what directly pierces your heart. It's not about some, some, some cheesy thing that is trendy or what other people say that is art. That is completely unimportant. Art is what you experience 
it is that thing that you get touched by and I believe that we really misunderstand art when we create these cliches and say oh like like for example like heart is a symbol of love so it's inspiring like if it's not inspiring to you then it's not inspi- then it's not inspiration for you you just have to directly feel it it's not an idea of someone else it's just your feeling so if you have an interest for something when there is something that cannot leave your mind that really really interests you there's a it's almost certain that there are things about it that touch you and make an impact on you and it's about it's about noticing these things it's about taking notes and realizing that this is important this is the stuff this is the goal that i need this is what i'm going for and just always just jot it down or write it down and i think that if you are uninspired you tend to ignore things that impact you you tend to pass them by you will tend to not pay much attention to them or you yeah you think to you tend to ignore them and that's that's the mistake that you need to you need to change and what does happen with the uh, with the things that that touch you over time you collect so much of them inside of your mind and then they get processed and then they join together and then you have an idea it's just like when you're dreaming when you are dreaming at night you have dreams and these are basically just your experiences and your subconscious that mashes up things like that but this doesn't only happen when you are dreaming at night it also happens at day and daily and this is inspiration this is how inspiration comes to me it's the subconscious working just like it works when i'm dreaming at night this is why it seems like a ridiculous idea to expect for the teachers in school to expect you or or the kids to just create something with a blank piece of paper like right away i don't get it because it 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 doesn't work that way for me like at all and perhaps perhaps you are the same type of person and this doesn't work for you actually it's like sitting down like oh come on sit down and make me a cake and i will not give you any ingredients or like you don't have any ingredients well i don't care you make the made the cake anyways it's just like this you have to collect these things before you can create something you cannot create it's just like you snap your finger and suddenly you should have an idea the process of inspiration starts with you seeing something that makes you feel excited that makes you feel good that awakens something in you or makes you feel happy amazed or exhilarated touched intrigued and every one of us has specific things that make us jump or make us feel inspired yes happy exhilarated intrigued and i personally believe that these feelings are fractals of this universe and of the other spirit realms like 
is like a like a color that like a color of the spirit realm that is reflected in something that we see and we recognize it personally that is how i see it that is that is how i understand it in my artistic mood i feel that everything that i look at is a symbol and is a f- symbol of something deep within myself that is that means something it's like a language that i understand intuitively and i think it's the same for other artists i think it might be really the thing and that's that's a good thing to know you know to just understand it and here it comes that even if you don't believe in spiritual matters then you might be a bit of a psychology into psychology or science and these these things that are like symbols for something they trigger something in your subconscious and everyone has this different because everyone has a different life experience everyone has different fears different desires just different personality and that is actually what will inspire you and if you are uninspired it's likely that you haven't exposed yourself to these symbols or to these symbols that trigger you that trigger your creativity admiration your emotion and so what is the answer the answer is to go and seek these things again expose yourself to these things again and these things can be a place but it can also be an activity that you like it can be a book or books or it can be music i don't know if it can be restaurants there's really no limit to this you have to expose yourself to what you like and you can go out and you can go to a place that inspires you or you can go to a park or 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 sit with a book and spend time with this activity and observe what you see there and this is supposed to be really no pressure that's the most important thing if you put pressure on yourself you're probably not going to notice anything but this is just like a relaxing activity i mean try to make it like a relaxing activity like don't pressure yourself into anything and if you are not sure about what you like then expose yourself to something that you think you like at least a little bit and then sit in it and observe and name what do you like about it let's say i i, I see i like this tree then say why do i like it hmm i love the way that it rustles in the wind i love that it's so elegant and soft that it moves so slowly that it's so gentle or something like that you in this process i would i would say try to ask yourself questions why do you like it just drill your brain into this thing like really really deep like ask questions get to know this thing get deep into it you know the thing now we are trying to do is to get deep into our inspiration what is it about how does it feel you can even sit in it and like try to meditate like just feeling it you are we need to explore our inspiration because if we have learned to ignore our inspiration we have desensit- desensitized to it and that's why maybe we are not getting any inspiration so really the point is get sensitized to seeing inspiration and to getting touched by it and make it important 
make it important. Whatever that is inspiring to you, you need to make it important again. A common trend with me in the past was that I didn't make the these things that inspired me important. I didn't pay attention to them. I sort of put them on the back burner and went to school and just dealt with schoolwork and all the life things, the normal things, the like stuff that you're supposed to do. And I made I didn't pay attention to what I liked so much. And that resulted in a lack of inspiration and like kind of like this empty tank in my mind. And so focus on it. If you like something, pick it up, focus on it, explore it, feel it. Just make it important. And if you are not getting the inspiration right away, don't worry. You haven't trained your brain to focus on this, so you have to do it over and over again, you know? Like, or maybe you might not be in the mood that day, and that is completely okay. Like, don't think that you have failed. Just try it again, and it will 100% come. But one warning to that is worth mentioning is that don't take this too seriously because then you can strive for something so high and so spiritual that when you fall short of that you can feel really discouraged and you will keep yourself from reaching that the thing is this thing this inspiration is reaching out to you all day every day and it is reaching out to you in a very subtle ways, even if it's not this oh high spiritual awesome awesome thing that you makes you feel high. It doesn't matter. It will never stop reaching to you, it will never stop being there. It will be there in subtle ways and you will always be able to give your hand to it and let it take you. Even if it's just like a slight breeze, even if it's just like so so small and so weak this love for things is always gonna be there the next level of this is building your artistic landscape so that means building something complex out of this feeling that you like out of this one thing or this little thing that inspires you is conjuring and gathering these things and creating something that is just much larger like a mental landscape and that is why you have to expose yourself over and over and over to this place over and over to this to these ideas these things that inspire you because in your mind you are going to find like little different pathways or like uh, paths that turn from this thing this main track it's like a side track from the main track like a side thought and side thought and so many side thoughts are gonna develop over time when you spend time in this place it's not like you're gonna stand stale in this you are you are gonna like ruminate about this and wonder about this like what is this what is that and you will find more things to dream about i believe that this is also like an artistic care routine just like when you have a plant and you have a watering routine and you have to water your tomato plant properly so that it brings you tomatoes you have to feed your mind ideas in order for it to connect something and deliver to you something or some result. So if you are just doing boring monotonous things and boring monotonous work, you're gonna not be inspired. Over time you will start noticing more details about this place or thing that inspires you. You will start to understand it more, maybe not even mentally, but by feeling. 
and that is the important thing to understand. Inspiration is not something that is primarily cerebral, it is primarily feeling based. That is why it comes naturally or so it feels like. It feels like it can overtake you. This place will over time grow, become bigger and more intense and you will have no problem picking inspiration from it. You had focused your mind on it, explored it, gave it intention and now it is like your big beautiful castle. You have discovered your inspiration. And you will want to b you will want to build a garden to that castle too and you will want to explore around that castle and around that garden and, and so on and so on and so on and so on if you know what i mean i think you do and over time you can really perhaps develop stories about this place and understand it mentally but the starting point was the feeling the starting point was what you felt and then from that you got to the story and f to to what it means and all of the details <laughs> so what comes out of all of this is daydream daydream when you are daydreaming you are developing your inspiration and now you can see how you are focusing your mind on the things that touch you so even imagine these things that you like and daydream daydreaming is an instrument of developing inspiration i daydream quite a lot i daydream to music it's it's very helpful to daydream to music that's been very inspiring for me because this music can like add flavors and colors into this daydream. It can, it can really make it more intense and more alive. And actually the thing that really breaks my mind is that this f land of being creative is feels like it's so abstract to me. It's like an abstract place, like a place that is so abstract that anything can be born out of it and i feel like this abstract place gets connected to feelings and then the feelings get matched to pictures and to music and stuff like that and through spending time in these things that inspire me i have discovered this something like a like an empty space like a it feels like one part of reality, it's like one layer of reality or, or one dimension of reality. And it's so abstract, it's like empty and it's so magnetic. Like when you are in emptiness, it starts attracting new ideas and thoughts and possibilities and things that you had never even dreamt of and new ideas for for your art, for your creative pursuits. Yeah, it really fascinates me, this kind of space in between, because it feels like that. It feels like like tapping into an empty space that, that then you can draw whatever you want into that, whatever these symbols that you liked, that you saw, that were meaningful to you. Or sometimes I think that this abstract reality is just um, feelings that are separate from thoughts. It may be that, I mean, but it's pretty amazing because it can attract different thoughts that are so creative. You know, that is why it's important to be in the feelings and to feel if you want to be creative and want to get ideas. And that is why I absolutely believe that dry logic is never gonna get you to inspiration. <laughs> I just explained the whole process, so now you understand it. Don't use dry logic, it's never gonna get you inspiration. 
it has to go through feelings and something or this thing that I explained that happens then. Maybe I could talk a little bit about how to provoke this fe- these feelings and this space in between maybe because sometimes we need to provoke it. Sometimes we just really feel empty and that's just how it is and I think that's quite normal. And a few things that I have as a, as a provoker or a starter is, for example, writing in a journal. I would really not have known that I can write poetry if I didn't write into my journal. It just happened. I just finally like discovered that I pretty much like s- get some poetic elements in my writing and so you can try writing because it explores your thoughts basically another one of my tools for provoking creativity inspiration is scrapbooking then listening to the sounds of trees looking at antique objects traveling by a car because especially because in this uh, traveling by a car you get this feeling of floating about your mind about l- above logic above your thinking you're just in the space between i think that's why driving in a car can be inspiring to many people or maybe even showering actually because you kind of zone out and float out what can block inspiration Hmm. inspiration can be blocked by employing too much logic rationalizing and not focusing on your feelings because it convinces you that there is nothing else beyond what you already know and what you already see and with inspiration and creativity you want to tap into new possibilities you want to tap into what is not there yet you if with logic you kind of cut yourself out into what exists and what doesn't and that's not what we want to do another thing that can block inspiration is disbelief in inspiration and disbelief in magic it's kind of like a scientist or like a logical believer thinking because some things we cannot necessarily explain but they are there and it might not make sense to us like it doesn't sometimes make sense to me i feel like i have a logical side to me and then i have this unlogical side to me but it's fine i mean both have a place and i just it's my own challenge to learn to trust this place that is not logical because you know it can feel unstable it can be feel scary or or unexpectable and that's how it feels even to me but it's where the inspiration lies and it's where the most beautiful things lie perhaps in the future i will find a way to purify this abstract personality or a part of myself or reality and then i can share it with you perhaps but so far i haven't but i still work with it otherwise i wouldn't be really creating another thing that blocks inspiration is depressed moods and i think that this is pretty self-explanatory and i don't need to explain this so another thing is being too stressed overwhelmed or anxious and this is one i'm also guilty of so sorry i guess 
being stressed makes your mind wander I think only in negative situation and gives you no space to relax into the space of inspiration I know this well from myself and the minute I start being stressed about something whether it is that the painting is taking me too long to finish or that I have too many things to do it rips my focus out of the inspirative space next what will block your inspiration is doubting yourself when you doubt yourself the doubtful thoughts take space in your mind and they don't make no space for inspiration or they kind of they're kind of like dark clouds that stand in your way in your vision or so that it feels to me and the last point the conclusion is that looking for inspiration is like looking at a thousand pictures and finding the one that resembles you that is always the one you feel feeling towards it is the one you like you do not have to create things out of thin air you interact with the world and that is how you remain inspired actually it wasn't the last point I have one more thing to mention and that is that sometimes you won't be inspired I mean I am not inspired all the time and don't force yourself because when I force myself I always become less inspired and there are days we are perhaps meant to just relax and explore our surroundings and take the pressure of ourselves because pressure makes us less inspired and as the creative process as we know comes with many challenges it's not always so, so pink and sweet and these challenges use up our mental energy and put pressure on us and sometimes our brains become too cluttered and too full to be able to function properly and then we need a pause we sometimes want to just observe our surroundings without pressure there undeniably is a pressure on yourself when you value creating and it makes you feel like you contribute to this world in a meaningful way but then we can have fear of not contributing that and not feeling like our existence is so meaningful the creative process comes with its expenditure of energy even if we love art we are constantly solving problems and we get often disappointed so we need to replenish but also it is nice to be free for just a day and be just a visitor to a place sometimes we want to slow down and not produce anything sometimes the creative wheels seems to stop that is okay they need to stop sometimes so we calm down a bit and perhaps some days naturally bring less inspiration than others no matter what we do but I feel like after a time of just wandering around I come up with a better energy to do new things some people don't like to have to do things I am one of them so let yourself be and flow naturally inspiration arrives when there is space where previously there was pressure thank you for watching please subscribe and like if you would like to continue watching my videos and have a good day